All right, so let's talk about the little convict, a.k.a. Uh, Toby and the Koala. Um, so this is another movie from Yoram Gross, who was the same guy who did Dot and the Kangaroo. And yeah, obviously this is kind of like, well, obviously you'll note a theme in his movies. A lot of them like involve... Well, for one thing, Australian uh, education in a way. Like, well, the previous movie uh, talked about uh, Australian wildlife and uh, stuff like that. Um, and this one goes a little more into historical stuff with Australia. Um, but yeah, they also both have uh, kids and uh, befriending animals, which I think yeah, pretty much all of his movies are gonna be like that. Um, but, yeah. Uh, so, the story is, we got this uh, artist um, who's selling paintings, and he's he's played by this guy named Rolf Harris, and, you know, I looked him up. Um, so, he's like a musician um, who has recently, uh, yeah, he was recently convicted a couple years ago uh, for uh, sexually assaulting some underage girls. So, yeah, that that does make the scenes with him a little uncomfortable. But, uh, so, yeah, we'll, we'll just try and push that aside, try to ignore it. But, uh, yeah, as, this, as the movie starts off, he's trying to sell paintings. And he's live action, by the way. Sorry, forgot to mention that. This is another movie that mixes live action with animation, but this time, instead of just the backgrounds, there's also, like, live actors, or mainly Harris um, is a live actor, and, you know, you see him in the background with uh, these animated characters. But anyway, um, <coughs> so yeah, when he's uh, trying to sell paintings, he's not getting anybody's attention, so he... Um, performs a song called Jake the Peg, um, and yeah, it's like a full musical number, and, uh, it, like, serves, like, no purpose in this movie, um, but whatever, I guess it wasn't an entertaining song and stuff, um, but yeah, he just performs a song, and it does get people's attention, and they enjoy it, but then once he's done, they just walk away, um, so yeah, then then he tells his granddaughter the story of uh, behind the paintings that he's selling. Um, so yeah, we flash back to like, well, let me see, uh, what, I guess it doesn't quite specify when, uh, when the movie, or when this story takes place, probably like colonial times or maybe a little later than that, I'm not sure. I mean, I don't even know when Australia was formed, but, uh, so yeah, I'm pretty uneducated with Australian history, but, uh, um, so yeah, it's, uh, there's a ship of convicts, and, uh, one of them is this, uh, young boy who's, like, 13 years old, and his older sister, um, and, uh, so yeah, the boy's name is Toby. <clears throat> so him and the other convicts, um, you know, they're, uh, yeah, brought to Australia and, you know, they become slaves to, uh, <clears throat> yeah, they're slaves, basically. And, uh, you know, the t there's, like, two, uh, guys who are, like, the real meanies and the slave driver bunch, um, you know, there's a sergeant, yeah, sergeant that they named Bully, and, uh, yeah, this, uh, a corporal that they call Weasel, so, um, yeah, they're, like, the main bad guys, they're the only ones that are really that bad, I guess there's some other soldiers who are, like, you know, they... Yeah, I guess they go along with them. They're like... So, yeah, whatever, but... Uh, 
yeah, the people in charge of the place aren't really that bad. Um, in fact, we'll get to how forgiving they are later, but, uh, um, <clears throat> so, yeah, they have to work for the man. Um, let's see, um, then, uh, yeah, one day, um, you know, they, uh, they're, like, shooting kangaroos, and then they end up shooting, like, a baby koala's mother. So, uh, yeah, the uh, koala's an orphan, so uh, Toby tries to take it in, but, uh, you know, the uh, sergeant and uh, corporal won't let him. Um, and uh, so, yeah, he has to leave it behind, but then this old man who's, like, a... Or yeah, I mean, pretty much all the other, um, yeah, convicts are uh, friends of his. But yeah, the old man who he's particularly close to um, manages to find the the baby koala that night, and he brings it in. Um, so yeah, he has to like hide it for a little while, and uh, well, then like uh, the sergeant and corporal they find out about the koala. Um, but yeah, then the guy in charge of the place, um, what is he, uh, yeah, governor, um, or, uh, or yeah, colonel. Okay, so anyway, uh, yeah, the colonel lets the boy keep the koala, so yeah, that's a start to show how much nicer the colonel is than the sergeant and corporal. Um... So, yeah. But anyway, they continue working until one day, um, yeah, the, let's just say the old man gets uh, severely injured, um, and then, yeah, he, he dies that night, and then he gives Toby his, uh, this uh, little watch of his that plays a song, um, and yeah, I guess the rest of it is kind of like they're trying to escape from the, uh, yeah, yeah, escape from the farm. And, uh, well, at one point, uh, this, uh, big strong guy ends up getting, uh, imprisoned for, you know, helping another of the inmates ex escape. Um, so yeah, Toby decides to set out and find the other, yeah, convict and, uh, so he can help, <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, along the way, he, uh, comes across this, uh, Aborigine, is that, that's what you, that what you call him, um, yeah, he's like a tribe, a tribe's boy, let's just say, yeah, <laughs> sorry, um, and yeah, he's got, like, a pet dingo, and, yeah, he, and apparently he can also talk to animals, so, uh, yeah, that's, uh, interesting that's uh yeah that's where uh this movie starts to lose a bit of its uh realism i mean yeah it had some you know uh fantasy stuff going on well honestly not really until he meets the tribe's kid um so yeah they uh soon they find the other guy um um and yeah, he, just, he helps them go back to the farm so they can break the big guy out. Um, and uh, <clears throat> and yeah, then we, uh, since the uh, Aborigine can talk to animals, he uh, makes them attack all the soldiers. And uh, <laughs> yeah, this is... Uh, <laughs> yeah, it kind of loses a bit of its... Uh, well, I just said it lost it, some of its realism, but, uh, yeah, pretty silly scene. Um, and then, like, the colonel's house ends up catching fire with his wife and uh, Toby's sister um, trapped inside it, so they got to break them out. Um, and then afterward, uh, the colonel lets Toby and, yeah, all the convicts uh, go free and... Uh, yeah. So yeah, that's uh kind of stupid. I I don't 
I'm pretty sure that kind of stuff never happened back in these days. Like, yeah, that's not something they just do, I'm sure. But, uh, well, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I mean, again, I don't know my Australian history, but I can't really picture in America they would simply let uh, the black slaves go or anything. But, uh, well, regardless... Um, so yeah, um, snark aside, um, I actually did like this movie, probably even a little more than Dot and the Kangaroo. I mean, Dot and the Kangaroo um, was cute, but you know, it had some problems. It had some like repetitive animation, the songs got repetitive, and they went on too long and stuff. Um, but yeah, this one, it keeps... Yeah, it keeps to the story. There's only a couple musical numbers, and, you know, they're all meaningful musical numbers, and they're good. I like the songs. Um, you know, there's one song while the uh, old man is dying about, like, the song on his watch, and, yeah, it's a pretty sad scene. Um, I mean, yeah, it is being sung by uh, Rolf Harris, but, yeah, you know, um... Rolf Harris is talented, but, you know, so is, uh, let's see, Kevin Spacey and uh, who else? Uh, well, God, <clears throat> you can name all sorts of guys in that category. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, um, okay. <clears throat> Sorry, they're making a lot of noise out there. Um, so, yeah, but... Um, yeah, I thought this was slightly better than Dot and the Kangaroo. Not by too much, but, you know, this one wasn't perfect either. It got a little silly at times. But still, um, it was, um, you know, it did get, uh, you know, it didn't hold back entirely. Not entirely on the slavery themes, you know. It, it is um, sad and unpleasant, but not too unpleasant. I mean, it's kind of um, watered down by the fact that the, uh, you know, the sergeant is like this obviously evil, you know, one-dimensional bad guy, and so is his uh, corporal, um, and you know, the colonel in charge of the place is not, and the soldiers are easily taken down by like all these animals that come in and attack them. Well, just the fact that uh, the animals fighting the soldiers even takes place in the movie um but yeah otherwise um the movie was emotional enough it uh it worked with uh, the themes it covered and yeah i i think i am developing quite a bit of uh respect for yoram gross because uh you know he does like seem to legitimately care about, like, Australian wildlife or just wildlife in general. Um, and, yeah, I am looking forward to seeing his other movies. Like, yeah, he's, uh, I'm enjoying his stuff so far. <laughs> Between this and Dot and the Kangaroo. Um, so, yeah, I can't think of anything else to say at the moment, but as usual, if there's anything else I feel I need to add, I'll put it in the comments. Um, and, uh, I'm gonna give this movie a 7 out of 10, um, and, uh, yeah, if you're interested, I'd say definitely give this movie a watch. And that's all I can think to say for now, so I'll just leave it at that for this video, and, yeah, Mash It and Smash It, signing off.